The Neo-Luddite Revolution. The epoch of a civilization can often be understood through the content of the stories we tell. In many ways, the very construct of a society is a story. Therefore, history becomes the scripture of culture. This curated version of events can then become something agreed upon and cherished, something to be proud of, or create a collectivized guilt. The story of the 20th century had been that of the triumph of capitalism. We had placed our faith in the free market, and in doing so gained greater prosperity. The West had become a beacon of ideological freedom of expression, of democracy and of consumption. But the looming in inevitability of monopolization as a result of the stratification of wealth, ever working its way to the corporate elites, allowed for a growing entanglement of state and business and the birth of the neoliberal economic framework that would become its downfall. In doing so, we began to create new areas for companies to explore and exploit. The snake would eat its tail ever more quickly, and the ant hill would produce an ever-growing pile of casualties. What happens when you reach the limit of how much something can grow? You find a new area to enter into. This is a foundational understanding of the neoliberal principle of capitalism. Nothing can come between a company's exponential profits, not morality, principles or even the ecological well-being of the planet. The diverging fault line between our human desire for connection, community, fulfilment and the cold calculating world of finance, fast food and atomization were emboldening a tension between the existence we were creating and the human that had to experience it. The vast distraction mechanism of abundance, the American dream of anyone being able to climb the hierarchy through hard work and dedication, acted as a replacement for the religiosity of previous centuries. God is dead, proclaimed Nietzsche in 1882, in reference to the post-enlightenment period of a new search for meaning and a consequential necessity to overcome the lack of dogmatic ideology. Just 110 years later, Fukuyama would proclaim the end of history in supposing that we had solved the problem of how to run a society with the liberal democracy. The squeezing of the proverbial square peg into the round hole of meaning resulted in an emptiness as exhibited in films such as American Psycho and Fight Club. The proclamation of need for the human spirit to break the chains of our bubble wrapped paradise and in doing so presenting our suppressed shadow selves. The history of the 20th century provided a contextualization for what was to come. Although technology and computers had been around for a number of years, they were becoming exponentially more accessible, first in the home, then in the pocket. As the technology was becoming ever more complex, it would begin to see each person as an individual for economic reasoning, cleverly targeting us with personalised advertisements. The correlatory relationship between the profit margins and the time spent on websites and applications quickly led to an abuse of the utilization of algorithms. The more time you spend on our app, the more money we make. So we all became both addicted and the product. Simultaneously, the neoliberal capitalism of the previous century was reaching fever pitch. The money was now in the hands of so few, and those few were so ingrained in the legislation and running of our new world that everything had to become profit-oriented. Streaming services were comparing themselves to sleep. Drinks companies were competing with the consumption of water. Everything was a commodity. Investment firms were buying up what was left of the free world and we all began to give up our personal sovereignty. The World Economic Forum was telling us we will own nothing and be happy. But as long as we could stare at our phones, mindlessly scroll and have next day delivery of the objects of third world slavery, we would be content with our new purpose as the sex organs of technology. When confronting the end of an epoch, 
this time around being late-stage capitalism, it requires the ability to be aware of its dying. But with a society engrossed in the vapid overconsumption of vacuous content, distracting ourselves from the fact that the roof was on fire and it's time to get out, what would this escape from nihilism look like? 2020 and the depth of a worldwide pandemic, the cracks started to really show. The technopoly had allowed runaway algorithms to direct the population down ever more elaborate rabbit holes, leading to vast echo chambers and inevitable tribalism. The necessity to keep people online for as long as possible had led to the overconsumption of information and ideas of little or any quality and then continued to present them only with persons of the same beliefs or ones that were even more undesirable. An awareness of what was happening began to simmer. People started to realise that in their distracted state the world had begun to rot and their freedoms were being taken away. A rise in authoritarianism had become the necessary response to the populace's newfound questioning of what was outwardly occurring. The foreshadowing of the Chinese social credit system and how media, state and business were seemingly working together internationally to create a narrative through which to lead us to a state of globalised autocracy. On one side was the Huxleyan nightmare of being drowned in irrelevance and distraction, where truth had become difficult to find, and on the other, Orwellian vision of oppression. In the decade leading up to the end of the pandemic, we had seen both manifest in technology. Ingrained in this paradigm, the nostalgia for the absolute was ever-present, manifesting in increasingly strange ways from raging culture wars that would lead to the outbidding of the majority from morality to the messiah-like reverence placed upon billionaires. With the gift of retrospection, as consequence of the accelerationism the pandemic provided, and in seeing what had been happening to consciousness on both individual and societal level, the need for a restructuring of society was difficult to ignore. So we began to look back. In doing so, the Epicureanism that predated Marx would come to the forefront of conversations of life fulfilment. What do we really need? became the question. The neo-Luddite expression of selective technological rejection was quickly integrated into the procedure necessary for adopting new technologies. The reaction to this new awareness was never inconsiderate to the vast abundance technologies had brought us, nor was it blind to the beauty of the free marketplace of ideas. Much like the Luddites of the 19th century, textile workers that would smash the new machines that were taking their jobs and ruining their communities, we were not indiscriminate. We would analyse technologies, immediate material impacts and act accordingly. First the algorithms that were tearing at the fabric of society and then the mind games inflicted on us by notifications, notifying us of nothing. And why stop there? Why do we need to force workers to work such long hours and have them fired automatically by apps or have our every message surveyed by giant corporations and government? As a beautiful consequence of the rejection of those technologies that did not serve us, a renaissance of new ideas burst from the seams of society. Art, music, design, mathematics and philosophy all jumped forward at a rate not seen before in history as we were freed from the chains of TikTok and Amazon but still able to share ideas freely and widely. Now, in 2068, not many of us can remember what it was like before the Neo-Luddite revolution. The new generation have never seen addiction to devices or slave labour under the guise of economic necessity. To them, the world we were creating and destroying is as distant as the great wars were for us. This is our story, our guilt, and our warning to the young to not repeat the mistakes we made. I just can't understand why the people of 22 would stare at their phones for hours. Was it not obvious that truth was censored and trivia was amplified? 
It must have been like zombies just walking the earth. Could you not see the irony in your obsession, quantifying everything, yet wasting half your life staring mindlessly at your screens? We will never forget your mistakes. We will take the lessons learned and find prosperity. You knew that you were becoming a product, nothing more than another commodity to be mined. Like all your minds were burned to create the sustenance for capitalism to continue. In your blind sight you were being led, like children, out of sight of your mothers, just chasing anyone with an ounce of credibility. I guess that's the gift that retrospect brings, to be able to look back and see how you were all wasting away. I think it's crazy how you found a phone screen to be a natural replacement to actuality or the required imagination of a book or the beauty of real love. I mean, how could a Tinder hookup be a natural replacement for true connection? Weeks would become years, always comparing yourself to someone else or lusting after the new big thing. It was only a small shift in your collective mindset to see that we have never needed to be leeched off of.